Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very short, special live edition of Spindle TV. I wanted to uh, just take a moment with you all and address some of the questions about what's new in V12 and what V12 of uh, the Vetric VCarve and Aspire software is all about. Uh, some of the new features, the new layout, everything. Um, to help kind of, uh, you know, give you a little bit of information to help with the transition, you know, from uh, the current version you're on to version 12. So this is going to be just a short uh, live video um, talking about the new features. Uh, hopefully I don't miss any of them and everything, but uh, we'll go over, uh, you know, basically some of them. So with that being said, let me switch over to my version 12 and let me sit myself down here in the corner all right and so some of you may uh recognize this model uh and everything from uh this past class that we just recently had and um just going to use that as an example and everything all right so first off, the very first thing that you notice or see uh, with version 12 is the new layout. So version 12 has a uh, new DPI and spelling support, which will um, make the software look more vivid, uh, more sharp, especially in high resolution monitors and everything. Um, it just has a cleaner look. The icons have been completely redrawn and redesigned. Um, and uh, the layout has changed a, a lot. And uh, we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But the tools uh, pretty much are, uh, you know, this, in the same order that they were in the older version. They just have newer icons. It's a clean, fresh, modern look and everything. Now, Right out of the gate, one of the things is, is vector tools and component tools, creating components, working with 3D models and everything. They are going to be now located in the same tab. So we won't have to switch from the drawing tab to the modeling tab anymore. It's all in that, uh, it's all together now in one tab and everything. The tabs are still positioned on the side. They're still movable to where you can move them around and change your layout and things uh, to where you either want them on the side or at the bottom and all. And the tabs will be your design, which will be all your vector tools and your component tools. You'll have your sheets uh, for where you're creating all your different materials for the work area and everything. Layers. All of these tabs are the same as they were before, you know, so we'll have our layers. And then with the two tabs that'll be slightly different is we're gonna have our component tab, which is our component tree. Uh, since all of the modeling tools and component tools and everything are now together with the vector tools, we just have a component tab, a component tree tab and everything. And then our clip art tab, of course, of the clip art that, you know, that's included with the software and everything. So, that um, is going to be kind of our, you know, our design layout. And uh, the file operations, create vectors, transform objects, edit objects, offset layout, those are all going to be the same and everything. And then we just have our modeling tools and stuff, you know, so all the modeling tools. And um, when we put our mouse over the icons, we still have our popped up as to what the tools there are. There are four new tools, which we'll talk about in just a minute. There's four new tools that are added. But as far as the layout, we still have our drawing side. We can still switch over to the tool path side of the software. Uh, there's some new tool paths we'll talk about in just a moment. And then our views now, the 2D view and the 3D view. Let me split those views and um, we can... Uh, take a look at the uh, views side by side. We now have a view bar in each of the views. 
and the view bar will allow us to um, uh, work with our component visibility on and off, our vector visibility on and off. We're able to work with vectors now in the 3D view. Um, the Let's pop over to the 3D view for just a second. So when I turn off the component view, the vector view is still on. So we can see these vectors are still here and everything. Um, if I turn off the vector view and turn the component view back on, that's just the component, the model, the composite model and everything. Uh, we have our, um, what is that? Bear with me just a second here. Those don't apply. We have the ability when we have our vector view on, uh, we can draw within the 3D view now. And so the, let me turn off the component here. In the 3D view, certain tools and everything, we will be uh, permitted to draw. We will be able to manipulate those vectors and everything uh, to change. And then from there, we can actually start modeling and everything right in the 3D view. Um, the, let's go back to, we'll click apply on that and close that tool. Let me move that just in place. And with the create shape tools and everything, we have new pulling. We can start kind of building and extruding our shapes right in the 3D view. Um, before I get into the drawing and everything, let me talk about manipulating the 3D view, spinning it around. We used to put our mouse over the middle of the screen, hold down the left mouse button and spin the view around. Well, we now have a new control handle over here. And so we can turn this like a, think of a die, like a multi-sided die, if you will. We can turn this uh, to see different parts of the design. There are preset sides like the front view, the bottom view, the right view, and then the left view. Let me get over to the left. And then, of course, the top view. And then we have in-between views, kind of like, you know, where it's skewed, isometric views in different angles and everything. So by turning this little die in the top right corner, and let me turn my mouse on so everybody can see where my mouse is on the screen. Bear with me a second here. Let's turn that on. All right, you should be able to see that green dot to see where my mouse is now. So we're over here in this corner and this control handle, um, we can spin and turn to spin our part how we want. Um, the Just a simple click on an area will bring us to, you know, whatever, um, whatever direction we want to go. The... Um, our bitmap view, that's what uh, Brooks Martin was uh, telling us, the bit, I don't have a bitmap in here, but our bitmap view on and off, if we had an image and everything, I could turn that on to see how our component matches up with an image with a tracing and things like that. Um, but um, we still have our standard handles in the top right corner as far as our magnifying glasses, zoom to fit, zoom within a drawing box, and zoom selected. And then we have our kind of our um, it uh, the X Y Z perspective and everything. We can still kind of uh, you know turn that on and off as well. We have our snapping is up in the top right corner. The smart snapping and the geometry snapping. Keep those on, by the way. Uh, those are good to have. And then our grid. You know, when we're in the 2D view and everything, our grid to toggle that on and off and all. The um, In the 2D view, we have our uh, toggle tool path, our wireframe to solid view still. We have our toggle tool path drawing visibility. So uh, we can kind of, you know, see our drawings and everything with the tool path. And then our uh, bitmap visibility, which it was turned off in the other tab and all. But um if we have an image, we can turn that on and off here as well too. And then of course we can, you know, 
in the 2D view, we can turn our component on and off as well. So just getting used to the, you know, the 2D and 3D views and the new tools uh, that, um, that are within them, it's going to just take some minor adjustments mentally and everything for you, but it's just a, it's a new clean kind of layout and all. Uh, across the top view, we have some new uh, view options up here or kind of drop downs. If you recall in the old version, we had just the layers drop down. Um, and we still have our layer drop down here, but now we have sheet drop down. So if I have multiple sheets, I can switch from those sheets here quickly in the drop down rather than going over to the sheets tab and having to choose the sheets, you know, from here. So when I have multiple sheets and everything and uh, my main sheet, I'll just call that main sheet and everything in this drop down, when I'm working in my tabs or whatever, I can go to this drop down now and I can toggle from one sheet to the next to make that sheet active when I'm working on it and everything. And I can switch, you know, back and forth here. Uh, I don't have to go over to the sheets tab every time. So I really like that. They're making it to where it's less mouse movements, less clicks and everything to, um, you know, get to where we need to get to. So other than the sheets drop down and the layers drop down, we now also have a component drop down as well too which is our component tree. So instead of going, having to go all the way over to our component tree here on the left, we now have a very convenient dropdown. I can come in here and turn on and off models. Uh, when we're in, let me turn my model back on. Uh, but uh, I can come in here and I can activate layers from here. I can turn things on and off visibility on and off for those items and um, I can work with them, you know, within this drop down. So I really like that. I like the, I like the ability of having these right at a glance drop downs uh, rather than having to come over and click tabs, you know, when I'm moving from one thing to another and all um, we can, you know, drop down uh, very quickly and stuff. Now, when it comes to the, uh, within the 3D, uh, we can now see our vectors. And let me get back into a kind of a top view. And in the 3D view, we can now view our vectors. We can work with our vectors and everything right here. So if I were building, you know, uh, shapes and everything, I now have the ability to, you know, build and extrude shapes, um, right here on the fly. And I can also go in and I can, you know, change um, my shape height, my shape design and everything using the handles on the built-in screen. So let me turn this view just a little bit um, so that we can, you know, see what we have going on here. So the model height, and everything, I have the ability to control that on the fly with a mouse movement. The, if I want to um, change anything as far as the base height, the meat underneath, I can adjust that under my shape on the fly without having to go into the properties tool, you know, and everything and, and, and deal with that. Um, we have the ability to, uh, come in and work with the fade and tilt here in the 3d. We've always had that ability. We just have these new handles and these new controls now that we can work with the draft angle or the angle of our shape and size we can work with. So that's pretty cool. Let me close that tilt and fade. But, um, and uh, if I need to flatten off instead of going straight to whatever my shape is, I need to limit to a certain height. We can we can do that here on the fly as well, too, with these handles. Really, really liking the ability to have my I don't have to be in my 2D view uh, to have the vector selected. 
Um, I can be in the 3D view. I can select the vector I want to work with. I can adjust or manipulate the shape um, of that vector. And um, uh, I can, I mean, I have total control. Down to the point that if I want to change my shape, I can even go into node editing and I can change my shape in the 3D view. And in real time, uh, it's going to adjust that shape, you know, based on how I pull the nodes and everything in the 3D view. So I do not have to go to my 2D view and manipulate my nodes, recreate the shape, and then switch over to the 3D view to see what the results are and everything. I can change and I can move uh, my nodes around uh, all in the 3D view and I'm getting real time feedback, real time, you know, changes and everything, uh, depending on what, you know, the shape or the change is, uh, and everything. And, um, I can go in and, um, I can manipulate those, uh, nodes on the fly, you know, uh, and, and everything, what, it, you know, whatever it is that I'm, you know, trying to, uh, you know, create or accomplish or whatever the case may be. So I really, really, really like that, uh, aspect of it. Now, let me get back to the top view here. I've got some kind of funky, weird shape going on here. Um, but you know, it still remembers my original shape here and everything versus what, I just created, right? And, and everything. Uh, so uh, that's pretty cool. The um, I don't want those changes. So I'm simply going to just, you know, revert back and undo. Actually, I can just uh, I can pretty much just let me get out of note editing here. Let's get rid of that. Wait for it. Oh, I'm hitting, I'm hitting the wrong keyboard lady. I was like, why is it not responding? I'm hitting, I've got two keyboards going on right now. So uh, I was hitting the wrong, I was hitting the delete key on the wrong keyboard. Um, so the, um, the ability to work with the 2D vectors and uh, in the 3D view or the 2D view, game changer. Now we're not, again, it's all about mouse movements. It's, a, it's all about a smooth workflow uh, and, um, you know, being able to stay within the moment without having to stop, move the mouse over, click, do this and all. We can kind of, you know, get to where we need to be. Now, one of the... Um, let me go through and let me delete some sheets and stuff here. Let me get rid of some junk. Clean up my file. One of the new abilities and everything is the ability to create. Let's talk about the, it's a tool. It's a new tool. It's the cross section. This is one of four new tools that are, you know, that are available to us. And we'll go through each of the tools and all. But the create cross section vector tool is pretty awesome. This is useful when you have things like frames or, you know, columns or spindles or just models that you need to kind of recreate that profile, a model that you might have imported in or something um, and, uh, you need to recreate that profile for the future or something in this, uh, with this tool, this cross section tool, I click two points. So I'll just click out here and then I'm going to drag my mouse over to the other side of my frame and I will click here and it's going to create that cross section. So the with the um let me go back to my edit object tools here 
I can now take and grab that cross section and move it out. And this is the profile of my frame right here. So instantly I've created the cross section for this frame that I could use with a single rail sweep or something and all. Now this is an Aspire feature. These, you know, modeling tools and everything, these are an Aspire. So V-Carve, you're not going to have the modeling tools and everything that Aspire has. Uh, but um, I'm just showing the four new, uh, you know, tools that are, you know, created and everything. So the... Um, Laney, shut the mouse app off and everything will work again. What's wrong with the mouse app? The uh, Oh, okay. So that's interesting. All right, let's turn. Let me just move that over there. I have multiple screens. So, all right. So the ability to create that cross section when you, when I minimize the, uh, um, when you minimize the mouse highlight, it kind of locks up or something for some odd reason. But anyway, just leave it open. The, um, but the ability to create that cross section. Now, if I have a model or something, I want to recreate the profile or something of it. I can, I can just, you know, grab two places and create that profile. Um, there's not really much of a profile or any or shape here and all, but with that tool, you know, I should be able to come in here and click here and here, and it will create that profile. And I'll just move it over there of that cross section that I'm, you know, uh, spanning, you know, those two points across and everything, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and again, this is as new to me as it is you, right. It just came out. So if I miss anything or overshoot anything, I'll, you know, I'll come back with a more thorough, but I'm just going over just some of the major, you know, additions and changes. So the ability to create cross sections on the fly, based off of an existing composite model or component. Awesome. Uh, so we can do that in everything. In my composite component, my composite model here, my profile, my cross section is very close to the cross section that I started with, just it's more condensed because my model height was reduced down at the end of this project last week and everything. It was reduced down. So now versus the original shape versus the shape that it actually ended up being. Everything was kind of condensed down, right? So um, very cool. So now I can, you know, have the ability to kind of deal with that. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the questions and all real quick before we go on and see what uh, we've got, um, you know, questions out. The mouse app doesn't work correctly in V12. Uh, yeah, it, um, I see that it, uh, it um, will is sporadic and everything when, you know, uh, depending on, you know, what it's doing. And sometimes it's kind of glitchy and all. Uh, so it kind of locks up and stuff. So we can turn that off. But um, I'm hoping that that'll get fixed down the road because it's good for videos and everything. Now, you said here, Mark Lindsay had issues with his uh, yesterday and it says... Um, it doesn't work in V12. Laney, shut down the mouse app, shut it off, and um, and everything will work again. So just leave it off. <laughs> so we'll just leave it off. But that ability to create those uh, cross sections on the fly with that tool, click, click, bam. Well, that's pretty cool. And, um, you know, very nice. Trim off what I don't need, you know, and uh, I've got my profile. Love that. I love that. So uh, let's look at these icons over here. We'll start from the left. Um, these are, for those that, that don't have Aspire, these are the Create Shape tools. And 
Um, with the create shape tools, we've always had the, you know, create a flat shape, create a profile shape. And um, we have some new tools uh, to where we can create angular shapes, uh, kind of angled shapes and everything coming up to a point, uh, creating smooth shape components and all, and then creating, you know, custom profiles. So if I am creating a shape off of a custom profile and everything, I think the um, ability to create that shape off of that profile, it might have to be a closed vector in order for me to uh, do that. Let's see here. Yeah, it's got to be a closed vector. Let me close this vector really quickly. Let's pull it over here where I can. Well, let me just turn this off. There we go. Oh, one click, one click. All right, let's go into node editing. Uh, let's come in here and the, I can see that I can manipulate the nodes, but my menus, let me see here. Click and drag the node to select and move to a new position. Hold the shift key when selecting multiple nodes. Hold the control key when you're dragging arcs, busy curves, and all that stuff. So I can pull nodes and everything. But if I want to go in and, you know, have a menu, right-click a menu and everything, I still need to go into the 2D view for that. And that's fine. So I can join or close that with a straight line. And now that it's a closed vector... I can go into that, um, I believe that vector is closed. Let me turn on the component there. Let me make sure my vector is closed. It is, it is. Okay. Create shape. Uh, we'll give it a base height of... Let's go 0.42. Wait for it to catch up. Okay. In that little text box there, I don't know if you guys and girls can see that. Let me zoom in. Let me get up close and personal with it. In here, when I'm in this tool, I can change this by typing in on the keyboard, you know, the size and everything that I want. Um, so, you know, I'm at 0 0.42 now. If I need it to be 0 0.125, I can just type that in or I can just a mouse movement. So while I'm in this tool, I can, you know, pull. Let me get back in there. I can pull that up or down with just my mouse movement. But if I need exact numbers and everything, I can click into the box here, give it a second to regenerate. I can click in here and then make that change there and just hit enter being able to control the component a component of the composite model like this man this is uh very much in line with a lot of the modeling programs that are out there that are you know uh, much more expensive and everything so uh that um it's just a great, it's, it's just a great thing. Now, the, uh, let's go over and um, let's talk about 2D views and, and everything. Uh, and let's talk about um, 
uh, some of the new tools. So I'm going to minimize out of this one and I want to go into this one here. Something pretty cool. Now there's a new tool in the tool pass called sketch card. So, you know, when we import bitmap images and things, um, we uh, usually do a trace bitmap and uh, we can do a color, a black and white trace, and then we can do our, you know, V card toolpath and everything. We still have that ability. We still have the ability to do the trace bitmap, uh, trace images and everything, and do a V card toolpath and all. But there is a new toolpath called Sketch Card. And the Sketch Card toolpath takes a vector image, a bitmap image, sorry, a bitmap image or a 3D model, and it will create vectors based off that image for a sketch type carving and everything. Um, the uh, This particular dragon here, so I'll do a bitmap, I'll select that image, and immediately you'll see these green lines pop up. I'm sure that color could be changed in the edit preferences and everything, but I like the green, it's very visual for the eyes and all. Um, we're going to zero start depth, no flat depth on this. I'm using a 60 degree V bit and I'm doing a bitmap boundary is what I'm machining. So I want to kind of stay within that, you know, that boundary and everything and the line thickness, the trace. So basically, um, depending on the thickness of the lines, that you're going to draw depends on how much detail is going to be created or taken away or what have you. So if we're too thin, we're going to lose some of the detail or we're going to have some elements in the carving that we might not want. If we're too thick, then our lines are going to, we're going to lose detail that we might not, you know, we might lose detail that, uh, that we're not, that we want to carve and things like that. Um, so it's going to be one of those things where we have to uh, get used to how we want our lines and stuff and based on the results. And the great thing about it is after we preview the results, we can go back and adjust that line thickness and, um, uh, you know, get that immediate change. Uh, I found that I like for this particular drawing, I like the uh, line thickness of 19. Um, and so when I calculate this, the sketch carve uh, tool path is um, going to take a look at the bitmap image or 3D model. And it's going to create a, a, a tool path. Uh, so like with the V car toolpath and trace bitmap and everything, we have vectors that get created and all, uh, with this, with the sketch carving and all, it's going to create a tool path, uh, based off of the parameters that I can carve. And in this case, I, you know, the, the border and all, I wouldn't want the border in there, but, um, let's take a look at that and everything. So just off that sketch carving and let's add some colors for some, you know, so we can really see, you know, the detail and everything. And then based on uh, that sketch carve tool path, I could adjust the line thickness more or less to see if I get more detail or less detail in certain areas uh, for this particular one. Um, I'm liking uh, the 19, but just for example purposes, I'm going to go back into this toolpath and I'm going to turn it up to let's go with 53, just as an example. So you'll be able to see the differences and I'm going to recalculate that based off that. Um, I should have been in the 2D view when I was changing that so you could see what the green looked like. We'll go back and look at that and everything, but it will recalculate based on that detail, those, uh, you know, tracing parameters. Let's reset that preview back to a blank preview and preview. Let's go look at the 2D view first. Um, and I'm going to open up this tool 
just real quick so you can see the areas uh, you know that are getting filled in. Now, I would um, normally not have this vector boundary here. Uh, and so on that graphic, it's just a graphic. It's not a traced bitmap or anything. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's, it's bringing that boundary in. And I haven't so far found uh, that I can, in the sketch card, that I can remove that. So it might have to be something that's cropped out that border and stuff afterwards. If it was a, tr if I did the trace bitmap and the V carve, then, um, then I, of course, after the trace bitmap, I would delete that border because I wouldn't want that border. The sketch carve is doing it based off the image and my image has a frame, right? The picture has a certain shape and a frame. Um, if I did, uh, if I took this image into a background removing tool, you know, AI background removing tool or something after the fact, uh, then I could probably remove that border and all. But right now in the sketch carve, it is calculating that in. And um, in the uh, 3D view, if we preview that visible tool path on that sketch carve, I don't have to trace this. I don't have to clean it up. I don't have to do anything. It's, you know, and it could be based off of a model or based off of a view and everything. And yeah, I've got that, um, that line in there, but as of right now, let me turn on my, I'm in my 3D view here. Um, there's no vectors to view because it doesn't create better. It's a tool path only. It's not a vector creator. So it's a sketch card tool path. So, you know, your image has got to be kind of right, you know, and if there's no background, if it's been removed, then it will remove that rectangle boundary. Now, the cool thing about this is, here's the cool thing about the sketch carve. This image right here, this image was generated with AI. So I use a program, a uh, paid service. My AI uh, is Fotor, Fotor.com. And I used a prompt, a text prompt. I typed in a black and white clip art style image of a medieval dragon with wings spreaded, wings spread, uh, breathing fire. Now it didn't breathe the fire, right? But it created the fire and everything. So it took what I said and interpreted it to the best of its ability. And it generated these two images. Now, the first time I did that, I did not put black and white in there. I put a clip art style image of a medieval dragon with wind and breathing fire. And the images that I got, uh, the first two images I got were these two, which I could very well use, uh, you know, color or black and white and everything. But I'm going to probably get better results black and white. I'm a big fan of it. So I just have to put in that text if I'm using AI. Now, if you go look at uh, Kyle over at uh, Learn Your CNC, Kyle does a great job with his tutorials and all. He has uh, a tutorial on uh, creating uh, sketch cards and creating images with AI. And he uses, for his AI, he uses the free Microsoft. And I don't remember off the top of my head what it is, uh, Microsoft Point or something like that or what have you. But um, uh, learn your CNC. Kyle just put out a video, just a short quick to the point videos, uh, accustomed to kind of what he, his videos are straight and to the point. Um, he put out a video on uh, making images, creating images with AI. And um, he uses a free AI creation service. Uh, it's from Microsoft. I don't know what it is. I use Fotor, F-O-T-O-R. Mine's a paid service. Um, but uh uh, the prompts, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot. Is that what it is, uh, Brooks Martin? I appreciate you on that one. Uh, Microsoft Copilot, co-p-i-l-o-t. So check that out. It's free and everything. And, uh, you know, um, I would recommend uh, using, Kyle will say this to you too in his videos, clip art style image, clip art style, that keyword, that prompt, very important. Uh, black and white is another key prompt. Um, and uh, so if I said a black and white clip art style image 
of a a a clip art style image of a uh, a skiing monkey monkey and I generate that image and everything um, I could download this image uh, this with my account here I could download this image in my account each month I get you know 500 something image download and I forget how much it is uh, it's only a few dollars it's not much and everything but um, the uh, AI will generate the image based on my prompt and everything. And uh, I like this one here. So I'll download that. And in the Vetric software, I can... Um, let's go to import... A bitmap and in my downloads my skiing monkey is there uh, let's get rid of the dragon in the background I don't think there would be any problem with it you know trying to draw both but hey uh, you never know um, the let's see here let's get that centered back on the board and so now with the sketch up, the sketch carve, I, you know, I could go through the trace bitmap tool and all that stuff, but the sketch carve, um, I will, and on this, I think I'm going to actually turn my lines back down. I kind of like, you know, between 15 and 19, uh, been playing around this just a little bit, not a whole lot, uh, but to get, you know, more, a little bit better detail, kind of tighter detail and everything. So when I can calculate that, It'll go through and calculate, and now I don't have to, you know, um, I don't have to worry about the, uh, uh, you know, creating that. So I can reset that and then preview the visible toolpath. And just like that, I have got a carving. Now, I don't like the stars and stuff. Uh, I would probably see if my, if changing up the, um, the sketch card, the lines, the line thickness, it's, you know, um, rather than filling those in, it's doing opposite. It's going around them and everything. So uh, I could do the, um, if I had, you know, uh, selected vectors or something in here, I could use that as an option. I'm just using the bitmap as an option here. Um but that, let me turn this down. With that, it is um, drawing the lines around the shape. And so therefore, instead of carving in the middle of it, it's carving on the outside. And what the result of that is, is... I get that little peg. Let me turn off the color view in the 3D view. Let me turn off the color and you can see that carving, right? Versus the little dots getting carved, it carves around. So there's going to be a little bit of give and take with the, you know, the sketch card tool, right? Um, can you ungroup the vectors to eliminate the border? There are no vectors, Daryl. So with the sketch card, it's sketching and it's creating a tool path outline based on an image. There are no vectors in this. Okay. Uh, I could go through the trace bitmap tool and I could, I'm going to go do a black and white trace, turn the fading off. Uh, I'm going to slide this up to 70. Let me see here. Do I want the moon and stars in there? Let's 
64, default corner fit, noise filter. I'll turn that up. Preview, apply, and close. Now, with this, um, that toggle, that, that, that bitmap visibility on and off right there on the fly. That's nice. Really nice. Um, with this, you know, I could go in and, of course, I got to clean up those vectors and everything. But I could just do a V-carve toolpath on this. Uh, to carve, you know, uh, what I want and what I don't really want is the border, but that's okay. Um, this, based on its carving right now, that's just the trace bitmap. If I try to, to do the sketch tool and everything, there's no bitmap, right? Now it's vectors. I got the bitmap turned off. Now, I could come in and turn the bitmap on, select the vectors, hold down the shift key and select the vectors that I traced, and I could use the selected vectors as the boundary and see if that would do anything for me, right? Um, as far as the changes and everything, we'll see if... Uh, Let's reset the preview and preview the visible toolpath. And on my stars, I'm still getting that where it carves around the stars instead of on it. So in that case, um, I'm just going to, at that point, with this, some is going to be great. Some it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to give you what you want and everything. If I do a V-carve toolpath on this, right, like we always would do, um, I'll use a 60 degree V bit. And, uh, I'll use, I'll put a flat depth in here because that boundary right there is going to carve around the moon and the stars. So I'll go an eighth of an inch. Uh, let's add in an end mill. To the mix got an open vector somewhere it's all right all right so reset the preview preview that visible toolpath Let's add some fill color in there, right? And so now I got my, you know, carving and my stars and everything. And that's an AI generated image, right? So um, either way, whether you use sketch carve or the V carve, we now have that ability. Super awesome stuff. All right. Another uh, new tool is the V carve inlay tool pack. Now we can, just like regular inlays, we can now quickly and easily create V-carve inlays um, uh, very simply. So uh, the, let me get rid of the monkey, 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 see, monkey, do. And let me, I'll just for right now do, Um, whoa. All right. So with the V carb inlay, uh, the pocket depth, I'm going to go 0 0.2, uh, glue gap. This is, uh, the glue gap when the two parts go together. Uh, I'm going to, um, 0 0.02. And then the surface gap, I'll go a sixteenth of an inch. And then I'm going to use a 60 degree V bit. And when I plug outer boundary, 
Uh, for the plug outer boundary, I'm going to use the sheet limits because it's going to create the male and the female automatically. So the sh basically the board, the sheet, uh, it's going to create that as the boundary for the male part because on the male, you know, it had the male has to be mirrored uh, and um, it has to have a boundary around it. Well, I'm going to use the sheet as the limits for that. When I calculate this tool path, we're going to have the... Um, on the sheets, oops, let me come in here, turn one off versus the other. Let me get rid of the monkey. So the plug uh, toolpath is, you know, going to mill out around the letters, right? Uh, and I'm use, I just use the sheet as the boundary. So it's milling all the way out to the boundary. I didn't add any clearance tool or anything like that in there. It's not really necessary, but if you don't want your VBIT doing all of this work and stuff, then yeah, you know, add that in. But, um, and I'll go back and look and see if there's an option for adding another tool and everything. But the B carve tool path, B carve inlay tool path, sorry, B carve inlay tool path. That's awesome in itself. Um, it does all of the figuring and everything for you. Uh, this is taking a little bit a uh, while because of my little V bit is doing all the flat work here and everything. So the simulation is almost done with that. Doo, 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 doo. Almost there, almost there, almost there. Almost, almost, almost. It's pretty awesome stuff. Don't let um, Roger S says, Laney, you can crop the bitmap image to a vector also. Yep. The um, we can draw a vector around the bitmap image and we can crop it to that image. Let me turn off the color here so you can see what's going on. So this was the male plug that was created and everything. Now I could have drawn a vector around that instead of going to the sheet boundaries. I could have drawn a vector around that and it would have just created that male plug to that boundary and everything. Um, so that's the male for the inlay. And then the female, the actual female inlay is just the... Um, of course, the pocket, right? And it does it like all based on your parameters and everything, you know, that you plug in. Now let's go back into that and our clearance tool, there's our place to add the clearance tool. So that uh, instead of having the VBIT do all that clearance and everything, I could have, should have, right? Put in a clearance tool. In this case, I'll do a quarter inch end mill. Could use multiple tools if I want. It gives me that option. It has the multiple tool box, so I can put in, you know, as many as I want. Uh, but, you know, the, the quarter inch would be fine. Um, I'm not really worried about offset or raster and all that stuff. But uh, based on my calculations and everything, um, it will, you know, uh, it will calculate that. So that is, uh, it's, it's really 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 cool that they've added that they've taken you know something that we do a lot of or that that's very popular and they've added it as part of the platform and everything um the uh we have the ability to add in keep out zones uh if i were doing a carving uh and let's say on this carving and everything um, I could draw in vectors where I want the router to stay away from and everything. Um, and this could be because of my setup clamps or obstacles that are in the way, whatever the case may be, but I can draw in vectors that I want to make sure that the toolpath does not go through. So the router bit cannot travel inside this area. It cannot travel inside these areas, right? These are called keep out zones. And I can come in and select 
those and I can, do, 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 do. I got to find the new tool for keep out zones. Bum, bum, bum. Bear with me just a second here. right there manage keep out zones i knew it would be it should have been i don't know why i was looking on the 2d side on 3d side um the clearance that i want to stay away from those keep out zones i'll just say a 16th of an inch and um create the zones from the selection so now with my tool path, I can go in and let me, um, let me delete these other tool paths real quick. Let me get rid of those really quickly. Mm -mm -mm. One by one. Okay. So I can go in now and I can recalculate uh, the toolpath. And since I have keep out zones, right? Please check the toolpath B carb one plug. The toolpath could not be created without violating the keep out zones. Moves uh, where, where the toolpath violate the keep out zones will be marked on the toolpath display in the 3D view. Um, so the, let me turn off this here. And the areas that are getting violated are getting marked here in the 3d view and all because um it uh this particular toolpath that goes all the way out to the boundary limits it um it violates those areas and all so the uh it will not let the toolpath be created uh for that uh it did not create the toolpath uh, for that because the um, they were created. So let me go back. This one's a new one for me, so bear with me just a second here. Let me clear the zones. Uh, let me go back and this toolpath is it's kind of a big toolpath. So. This is not going to fall within that, the parameters of what the keep out the keep out zones do. Let me create a scenario that would fall within the parameters. Um, let me create a scenario that would fall in the parameters. Bear with me just a second. Let's say that I have a part here here and here i've got a part here and here and i've got the wow right there in the middle All right, I'm going to set my keep out zones. It'll be these areas here and create those. Now I'm going to come back in and select my design. Uh, we'll do a V card tool path. Calculate. Now, if we look at the, let's get to the top view here. The toolpaths, when they were created, 
it created the travel path going from one object to another around the keep out zones. Normally it would have just gone from one straight across to the other. So it's now navigating around those keep out zones. If I had the keep out zones turned off, you could see where the tool pass would normally go, right? They would have just went from one to the other. But with those turned on, the in the 3D view, it marks the vectors that are violating that uh, the keep out zone, right? So these areas here and everything. So when I recalculate this, It's not going to, um, it's not going to take and change it. So they have to be defined before the tool path is calculated. Can they not be defined after? Um, interesting on that one. Very, very interesting. So right now, this tool path yeah so it's not going to uh that's an interesting one that's 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 an interesting one right there because let me delete those visible. My keep out zones are defined. Oh, did I not have the right vectors selected? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute now. Now let's 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 go back and look at that. Um Let's go back and look at that now. I think I had the wrong vector selected, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> because if there, if you can't turn that on and off, let's go back now. Recalculate. Hold on a second. Um, okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So in here, in this toolpath, I've got these vectors selected. My keep out zone. Let me clear that. For some reason, there's a lot of things in the keep out zone. One. One, two, three create. There we go. Now recalculate. Now. There we go. That's what I was expecting to see the first time around. The reason why it wasn't working, my bad, my bad. When I turned off, when I cleared the, uh, the zones, when I went to create, when I, I just went right back and click create from selection, well, I had my vectors selected, the vectors that I'm actually carving. They were selected, not the keep out zones. So it was thinking that the vectors of the circles and the wow were the keep out zones. And that's why it was saying it was violating, you know, those and everything. Um, that was a user error, user error. So let's uh, now. If I clear the keep out zones and I look at my 3D view, the tool path comes right through. But if I come in and turn those keep out zones back on and create from there, it automatically 
recalculates the tool pass and moves them around those keep out zones. That's what I was hoping to see. That's what I love to see. That's great. Great, great, great. So don't don't be an idiot and don't uh, don't accidentally have the wrong vector selected for your keep out zone. Now, what this means is if there's certain things, if I got bolt heads sticking up, if I have clamps sticking up, if I have just something in the way, you know, um, if I'm doing a full sheet or something and I've got, I don't know, I've got something, you know, an obstacle that I need to avoid. I can't have my spin door or my router bit going near it. I can, I can create that position on the material or the, you know, the layout and I can activate that as a keep out zone and it will reroute the tool path around that keep out zone. That's awesome. That'll keep us from, you know, potentially crashing our machine, breaking our router bits, damaging things like that. So keep out zones. Great, great job. Excuse me for one second, ladies and gentlemen, while I get something to drink. Okay. Now, so the... Oh, that's good. That's good. I, I'm sorry. I screwed up on that one. I, I was like, wait a minute. I almost was down. I was almost like disappointed that they didn't think of that, but it was me. It was user error. They thought of it. They're smart people. They know what they're doing. It's the user. <laughs> me. I screwed up. So as long as you have the right vector selected when you create your keep out zones, all is good. All is good. That's phenomenal. So there's the icon for that, manage keep out zones. That's great. Um, we still have our tile toolpath manager, our estimated times, preview, job sheets, and everything, save toolpath. So the buttons and all, beautiful. I really like the new graphics. They're very clean looking. It's just going to take visually, mentally. I'm looking, you know, I'm always looking for the red, white, and blue floppy disk when I'm looking for the save toolpath button, right, mentally. And uh, now it's just a, you know, it's that router bit with this little save disk next to it. Uh, and it's kind of a monochrome color. And that's fine, right? You know, just I just got to kind of just get used to that. That's all. Uh, but they've done Vetric, if you're listening, Washington, beautiful job on the layout. Really like it. Okay. So um, that's awesome. And the, let's see here. It would have worked on the other toolpath as well, too, that inlay toolpath and everything. Um, but I had the wrong vector selected for that as well when I when I calculated the keep out zones when I when I set them. So again, use your error. All right, let's uh let's take a look here. We've got um on the tools, we have an orthotic view uh control. So our orthotic view control, um, what this does, it, it changes, it's this button right here, and it changes, it toggles between orthotic view and perspective view, kind of camera proportions and everything. So when I'm looking at a tool path and everything uh, in the 3D view and stuff, um, kind of, uh, you know, looking at the view perspectives or, or orthographic, not orthotic. Orthotic is your feet. <laughs> it's your, orthotic is your insoles, right? Um, orthographic view is the word that I was actually looking for. <laughs> Somebody's like, what's podiatry got to do with the vetric tutorial there, Lenny? But um, the, uh, so the orthographic view and the perspective view, it just changes that, uh, that view uh, on, um, like when we're looking at a that 2D two-dimensional view versus that 3D view and everything. So interesting. Um, when we're looking at the uh, carvings and stuff, I like. I really like that new control there in the corner. I keep every once in a while I take my mouse and I'm trying to move and manipulate the screen like 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 the old days, right? But uh, then I remember that they have this and I really like this uh, before um, it was, you know, wherever your mouse was positioned, det determined on how things would turn and all. And I really like that. I mean, you have so much more organized control of that turn. Can't say enough about that one. Okay. 
So there's our bottom, there's our top, wonderful. So when we're looking at this, um, that uh, orthographic view versus the perspective view, um, I'm sure it'll come in handy, but we have it. We have it. I don't know. You know, it'll come in handy for some reasons, but uh, there you go. All right. Let's see here. Um, we have, let me look at our, our tools here. Sculpt visible model, create a textured area component. That's all the same. Spin or curve turning tool, uh, extrude, single line extrude, two rail sweep. Um, clear out the area of the inside or the outside of a select component, split the component, um, remove the back plane, slice the component. All that's the same. Create the vector boundary, bake the vector, create a component from a visible model, apply smoothing, reduce the height, scale the Z height, uh, reduce the height of the component while retaining the surface detail. That's an embossed tool. We talked about the other day. Um, scale the Z height of a model, create a component from the visible model with the added draft, and by adding a draft, and then um, create a component based on the offset. So, all that's the same. The four new tools we have are create the angular shape of components, create the smooth shape component, uh, create the shapes of a custom profile, and uh, the cross section tool. That's a game changer, drawing that cross section. Uh, so many times um, it would have been nice to know the profile of a particular frame that came in or got imported and stuff. Uh, over on the drawing side, all the tool paths are, you know, uh, the same other than the sketch carve. That's pretty cool. And the V carve inlay. That's really awesome. And uh, then the keep out zones, right? Now, there are, I'm sure there's other things uh, that um, that are in there, but in a nutshell, that's really it. So you have a beautiful new layout. Uh, we can access our components, layers, and sheets from drop downs now. We have our view bar in each of the 2D view and the 3D view. We can still split the views as well. And I love that the instructions are here, right? So when I'm in the 3D view, it, I got these instructions, these little prompts uh, that uh, I can turn them on and off the visibility. But I kind of like that as I, you know, as a new interface and a new, you know, some new changes and stuff. When we're in a particular tool um, or we hover a mouse over tool, it tells me what's going on down here, right? So uh, toggle the bitmap visibility on and off, you know, toggle the modeling plane on and off. Uh, turn the material block on and off, you know, uh, toggle the origin visibility on and off. So I'm reading those down at the bottom as I'm hovering the mouse over there. I like that. And I can turn it off, right? We can, we can hide those prompts and everything with the visibility. I don't know. Pretty cool. So all in all, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, that's it. You know, give it a, give it a try, play around with it. Now, Let's talk about one last thing really quickly. Uh, the, um, the upgrading to V12. Now, I had a conversation with, um, with Vetric, and I, um, my question to them right out of the gate, they were showing the OEMs, uh, original equipment manufacturers, the kind of a sneak peek of the version 12. And um, in that live kind of event and everything, I, I the question I asked, okay, um, was this. Uh, I'm going to read it verbatim and everything. Uh, I said... Um, the only starting question I have is for new customers who just purchased Vetric software. Like my new customers that just purchased their machine, just purchased their Vetric software, desktop pro or Aspire from OEMs, right out of the gate, do they have to pay more money to move to 12? And um, 
I continued on after that initial question. I continued with kind of a part B to the question. I said, this would normally have come with their purchase for the first year. But from what I see, we're requiring these individuals to shell out more money just to get to the latest version. Am I mistaken? Question mark. Am I mistaken with that fact? Because in the top of my and your Vetric portal and all, it had this little prices and everything. Uh, Vetric come back and said, uh, Lainey, uh, V12 will be a free upgrade for any customer that has purchased their software in the last 12 months. They will automatically have V12 credited to their VO account. I replied back, that's great news. Thanks for clarifying. They came back again and said, no problem at all. We haven't changed anything in our generous upgrade policy for this release. So um, if you had just bought your software and everything within the last 12 months, B12 is going to be a free upgrade. Now, if you just, you know, uh, recently, let's say you purchased version 11, let's say you were at nine or 10 or whatever, and you purchased the version 11 upgrade. And um, after the 11 upgrade, there was 11.5 and then 11.554. There's two major updates, you know, uh, you know, that normally happen and everything. Uh, version 12 wouldn't be part of that. So it would have been 11, 11.5 and 11.554. 12 won't be a free upgrade. Uh, there, there, will, there will most likely be a fee for that. You're going to have to look in your Vetric account, your Vetric VNCO portal, your account. You're going to have to see if version 12 is a free upgrade to you or if it's a paid upgrade. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's paid, there's a fee that you pay uh, to get it. If it's free, it'll be populated in your account already. Okay. Um, but uh, normally there's two, normally, the you know, back in, in the day, if I ver if I purchased version 10, I would get the two major updates, 10.5 and 11. And if I purchased version 11, I would get 11.5 and 11.554. Those two major updates, you know, with my with my upgrade. 12 would not be included with that. Um, so whether or not it's free to you or it's a paid update to you, only your your account will tell. You, you have to look in your VNCO account and see if it's an upgrade. Um, I personally... Just visually, my mind has to get used to the, the 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 new icons. They're all in the same place, so I mean, I'm not gonna have to learn anything new. Um, the new colors and the new looks and everything, uh, you know, just kind of like you know, hovering my mouse over and seeing what each one is and all that stuff. But other than that, I love the new layout. I'm super I'm super pleased with it. It's visually appealing to me. I like the ability to work with the vectors in the 3D view on the fly the new pull handle layouts and everything on the fly with creating shapes and all in Aspire. Uh, you won't have that ability in, um, you know, creating shapes and stuff. You won't have that ability in VCarve or Desktop or Pro. But um, I love the VCarve inlay toolpath. That's awesome. And uh, the keep out zones. I hate breaking bits on clamps and, you know, and crashing my machine because I wasn't, you know, thinking and everything, and, and I can lay, lay that out now and, and have the tool pass go around those areas. I like it. I like it all. I'm super happy with it. You may or may not be, right? Because some people can, you know, adapt to change. And some people, if you've never read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Some people change. It's hard for them to adapt to it. Even if, you know, you know they're just something they're not used to, right? And the change is good. If you're, if you're not used to adapting to change very easily and you know, and all there's nothing from what I can see right now, it's just the look new tools, cool new tools that we have to learn, but none of the old tools. We don't have to learn any of the old tools that we, we know them already. Uh, we just have to kind of get used to the new icons. So it's a new look, clean, fresh look. Um, it should not be anything to be intimidated by uh, or 
it shouldn't be anything that, to keep you from updating because of the new interface and all that. And you're, you know, I like the way I am right now, Lainey. I'll just stick with what I got because I'm used to my red, white, and blue floppy disk and all that stuff. And hey, that's cool. Absolutely. That's cool. But nothing, it's just a new look, right? We got some cool new tools and abilities and everything. We can see things that we couldn't see before and we can do things that we couldn't do before. Uh, but nothing major has really changed. It's a positive. Every, there's no cons so far to this that I can see. There probably is cons, but I haven't dug deep enough in it, into it to find it. So if you're one of those that are kind of like, you know, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Just know I'm not going to, you know, bullshit you in any way. It's, it's a nice look. I like the new features. I like the new organization. I, I love that I don't have to keep making mouse movements to get from one tab to another to do the things that I want to do. That's a positive thing. It makes your design time much faster and all. So take this little bit of information, watch some of the other videos from other creators on YouTube that are going to talk about uh, V12 uh, and the changes and all. Um, Copilot, go check out... Uh, um, Kyle uh, uh, at Learn Your CNC as well. A uh, great guy, does some great things. Um, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that on the 24th, I'm going to be live with Garrett Frome from IDC Woodcraft. He's invited me as a guest on his live Wednesday night uh, show on the 24th. I'm sure we'll we'll be talking a little bit about V12. I don't know what he has in store for me as the guest, and all. he hasn't really, you know, talked to me yet about what he's gonna, you know, uh, you know, uh, inquiry me on, query me on, right? Ask me on. But um, check out that live event. I'm gonna look forward to that. I really like Garrett, I like his videos and all. I'm sure he's gonna come out with some stuff on V12. Get all that, absorb all that information that you can. I am just literally today is my. Uh, one week anniversary of getting to play with this. Um, and I thought, okay, I'm going to make a video now and everything to go over the changes and stuff. You even saw, I still even stumbled. I stumbled. <laughs> I selected the wrong vectors with the keep out zones, you know, right? And then it had me kind of questioning myself a little bit. So even I'm stumbling. It's all new to me too, right? And if anything, you know, as new things come across, I'll I'll relay them to you in classes and live events and all. But this is it. We're we're done. This is it. Uh, take what I take. Take what I told you, showed you, and go learn some more for yourself with other videos and other creators and just heck, downloading and, and getting into it. It's it's cool. Sketch Carve is awesome. I mean, it's got some drawbacks I saw because I, I I would want the vector to be gone on that dragon and, and everything. So that would be a V-carve toolpath. Nothing changes, right? But um, heck, I can just go to remove.bg and remove the background. It would have gotten rid of that border. It would have been kind of a PNG. There would have been no, you know, real, I think it would have worked. But um, I like it. It does a really good job. Got to play with the numbers a little bit to get the look that you want. But heck, that was easy. And then using AI to create images and all that stuff, that's pretty cool. Now, that's something that Kyle Kyle's talking about. You know, it's something I just showed you. That's not part of Vector. Vector didn't say, oh, hey, we're, being, we're creating sketch cards so you can use AI. No, that that's just one of the cool things that you can do is use AI to create images to V-carve, sketch carve now things like that. So, yeah. Um, the, uh, did I hear Facebook has, no, uh, that's, that's exactly. So this, this is the reason why I'm, you know, did I hear that V12 has AI integrated for some tools and functions? No, you didn't. Uh, but you can use AI to create images. You can download those images and import them into Vetric and then, you can do sketch carve off those images or you can do photo V carve and all just like I did with the flying monkey or the skiing monkey and the dragon and all. Uh, but um, no, there's no AI integration in, in, in Vetric. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've talked enough. I've shown what I want to show. Um, 
hopefully it just gives you a little bit of an insight of what's new. I probably missed a few things. There's probably a couple other little neat little nuances and all, but hey, um, Patrick did a great job. Nice clean layout. And the DPI, the resolution on high resolution screens, it's really sharp looking. So I like that. That's going to help me for videos and stuff. All right, everybody. Until next time. Hope this helped a little bit. See you soon.